Brentwood High School has been producing yearbooks since 1982. This year's book is going to be really neat. It's a bit of a vintage look, so it's going to be um, new for a lot of our students who have had some really different styles of yearbooks lately, so that's fun and I'm excited for you to see it. Yearbook staff has a lot of different jobs and all those jobs work together to create the perfect yearbook. So they have to write all the text that you see in the yearbook and then they go and seek out the people in the pictures to get quotes. It really prepares them for lots of other opportunities going forward. Ordering yearbooks can be a little overwhelming but this year is as easy as a simple click. Yearbooks can be ordered online at yearbookordercenter.com and when you go to that site, the easiest way to get to our school is with the school code, which is 12712. Yearbook staff work extremely hard and uses a lot of dedication to put it all together. Shelby Edwards, WBHS 9 News. With fall sports ending, the winter sports like basketball are just beginning. And this year, there's a new coaching staff for the boys' basketball team. Our team has done really well with our off-season workouts. We started, once school got back, we started with uh, off-season conditioning. We did in the weight room, and then when we got back from fall break, we stepped up our conditioning. So uh, they would come in at 5.30, and our guys really have worked hard and, and really starting to see the results of their hard work. Other schools are also getting ready for the upcoming season. We have, you know, a really, really good district in basketball. Uh, Ravenwood will be will be good. Centennial, Franklin. I mean, it's it. There's no off nights. I mean, Summit. I mean, you just go down the list. And then with the way the new four classifications starting this year in TLSAA, we're kind of split in the county, but we still will play traditional rivals like Ravenwood. But uh, very, very competitive district. Very well coached. So, ought to be a lot of fun. The first game is November 16th at home against McGavin. Lucas Deaton, WBHS 9 News. In its first competition of the year, the Broward High School's forensic team won first place at Henry County. Matt Grimes is the head coach. I have been the coach of the forensics team here at Broward High School. Uh, in some capacity for all 10 years that I've been here, and I was actually a member on the team when I went to high school here. But it's been an unusual year. Many competitions have been canceled due to the lack of participants and COVID restrictions. We have a number of events that are upcoming, some virtual, some in person. We've got an online tournament in East Tennessee at Morristown uh, the next weekend, and then we've got some various other competitions here and there before the winter break. Virtual competitions have been taking place ever since COVID-19 started. Virtual competitions are difficult to manage in terms of getting all your ducks in a row. You have to collect a bunch of videos, you've got to upload them to an online platform, you've got to teach judges how to use the online platform, but once everything is said and done, it tends to be nice that you can have a weekend off here and there and still be competing even though uh, you haven't really traveled anywhere. Students practice after school at least three days a week. We have team meetings on Tuesdays and then debate practice on Mondays and Thursdays and then individual practices on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So we are busy pretty much every day of the week except for good old Friday. Our students are hard at work getting ready for these competitions coming up. Maddie Stabile, WBHS 9 News. Wrestling is a mentally and physically demanding sport. The Brimwood girls team ha this season has only four members and they are trying to recruit more. Last season, the wrestling team as a whole performed well. Erica Moore, who finished the fourth at State last year believes that girls will do well. They do good. I think they can do really good. I think they just have to get their minds into it to win. They're like a little nervous, but I think they're going to do really good. And um, I have like a lot of hope for our seniors this year. Head coach Damon Smith wants the girls to endurance training so they can run before practice. The captain, Erica Moore, outside of practice, works on strength training throughout the week. Well, like, I know the team's getting more endurance stuff, so we're doing a lot more running, so we're, like, running two miles sometimes, but, like, 
for me, I'm like trying to lift weights. So I've been lifting weights five times a week. And then on Saturdays, I'm going to do kickboxing. And on Sundays, I try to go to Coach Tickner's practice somewhere like a, an hour away. So yeah, it's just like a lot of strength training and stuff. The captain and her team are looking forward to a successful season this year. Their next tournament is November 20th at Blackman. Hudson Guy, WBHS 9. The lunch lines are normally quite long at Brentwood High School. New cafeteria manager Haley Hall says it's not easy feeding about 400 students each day. You know, there goes, there's a lot of different components that come to it. You have your sandwiches, you have your chicken patties, you have, you know, like Asian day, you have to cook the food, you have to, you know, mix it in the sauce and cook it again. And, you know, it, every day is different and every day, you know, there's, there's always just a different struggle. The Brentwood High Cafeteria values the quality and nutrition in the meals they serve. It's important that they get a balanced meal because, you know, sometimes that this might be the only balanced meal that they get every day. And so it's very important that we make sure that we are giving them what they need. Today, keep in mind when you're enjoying your lunch that a lot of planning and hard work went into it. Sophia Andrews, WBHS 9 News. This semester, the band has embarked on a mission to build a sidewalk made of bricks to celebrate former and current students. Here with more information is BHS Band Director Drew O'Keefe. It is a sidewalk that's going to be made of commemorative bricks, um, and we're using those bricks to recognize students, um, current and past uh, students, of their achievements that they've made here at Brentwood. The Walk of Fame is supposed to be for, to recognize students that have achieved uh, things, whether it's in sports or academics, but for famous people. The bricks can have a variety of images engraved into them, such as a volleyball, lacrosse sticks, or a football. So they'll, they'll request the brick uh, to be made, and then we have an insulation team that is going to come in and install it for them, so it won't be installed by um, the people that are purchasing the bricks. The new Bruin Walk of Fame walkway will replace the current asphalt sidewalk next to the senior parking lot, starting from the field house, and will end at the school entrance to James C. Parker Stadium. So we'll hopefully this project will last for years, but uh, each each um, fundraiser has a has a due date, so we're having different insulation uh, deadlines. So I think this next one is at the end of December um, is when the deadline is for the first insulation, and then we'll open it back up the next semester for a second installation. Phase one ordering deadline is December 31st. Payne Nordstrom, WBHS 9 News. The recent drop in temperature has caused students to dress up for the occasion. Well, I hate it, honestly. I don't... I don't really like wearing a bunch of long sleeve shirts all the time. And if it gets too cold, I have to wear pants and I just hate pants. With morning lows in the 30s, Cooper McAfee is doing a lot more to protect himself from the cold weather. Mom bought a bunch of firewood, so we're getting a little fire going. But Cooper isn't the only one who will start changing his daily routine. They're gonna start cranking up the heat in the school, so we're all just gonna be sweating all day. And just not going to be good. This weather won't just last today. It will go throughout the rest of the week. Will students be prepared for it? Some will, but some won't. Though You'll see a handful of kids just wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Cooper says it's much colder in Middle Tennessee than West Tennessee. Well, recently I went on a uh, voyage to uh, Germantown, Memphis, and it was, it was warm up there. We got a, little, got a little tan going on, but came back down here, I was freezing. But with winter still a month away, it's going to get a lot colder. Frank Powell, WBHS 9 News. The candy store is located in Section E right outside of the school's cafeteria, also known as the Bruins Den. Many students during their break period and lunch get a variety of snacks, such as cup of noodles, pretzels, skittles, and many other savory snacks. One of their biggest sellers is coffee. Why we started the Bruins Den here was because we needed a way to teach actual my classes. I have teach business management and um, Miss Niece teaches marketing and better way than just a much better way of teaching just to, from the textbook is giving kids experiences. Bruins Den is open during the morning, break, and lunch. So it's a good way to get something to snack on during class. Alright, so the requirements are that 
business management, it's a requirement for their grade. They have to work in the store. And then DECA members get to work in the store. Money raised goes to DECA. Cooper Ingalls, WBHS 9 News. Troy Bond has been coaching high school basketball in Middle Tennessee for years, but this is his first year at Brentwood High. Uh, it's been outstanding. It's a great community, great school. Uh, the faculty's been amazing. The, the students amazing. Uh, our parents and our, our kids are working really hard, putting a lot of time in, uh, really enjoying Brentwood. Coach Bond is setting the bar high for his team, hoping for a return trip to MTSU's Murphy Center. Well, I think our goals is to, to get to the state tournament. Uh, everybody wants to be playing at the glass house, as we call it, and uh, you know we want to take each step to get to that opportunity and uh, start with the district and then go to the region and then hopefully get sub-state and, and get to state tournament. The team's first game is November 16th against McGavick. Ethan Johnson, WBHS 9.